Eurozone, European Union, Euro friends, you've seen how, as I've covered in the last video update, the current banking collapse is leading now to a path towards central bank digital currencies. Guess what, Europeans? Now it's your turn. Within the next couple of weeks, if not next week, definitely within the next couple of weeks in April, your banking crisis will begin. Unfortunately, your situation is much worse. And as I've explained in the last video, how the banking collapse leads to the central bank digital currencies, we'll now go over why it will lead to the same path for the euro as well. Let's start with some actual legal financial advice. Not from me, of course, but from a mainstream expert. Well, the real problem with Credit Suisse, which is the, the analog, is they never made any money. Deutsche Bank is actually very profitable. So let's just, let's start there. Perhaps none are really immune to the inverse effect of Jim Cramer. To be fair, Deutsche Bank was in better shape than Credit Suisse, but both have been broken since 2008. And there's a lot more bank blow-ups to come. These kinds of things were known in the financial world about the condition of some of these banks and some also know that Deutsche Bank was a big manipulator of the gold price across the world. Now that that manipulator is gone, there's probably some positive implications for the real price of gold because of this. Not financial advice. The price of gold chart looks pretty damn good. But back to the Euro, let's get into some charts. So we're going to start with the chart of the Euro, and then we're going to look at the European Union. If you take a look at the Euro chart, last year in July, this was the first time the Euro was worth less than a dollar in over 20 years. We see at this point, Saturn was within less than 2 degrees conjunct in the Euro's south node. Chiron was less than 2 degrees of opposing the natal Mars, and Pluto was less than 2 degrees of conjuncting natal Venus. So if you're new to astrology, we'll get into what all that means here in a little bit. The last time before that, the euro was under a dollar on July 15, 2002, 20 plus years ago. Saturn was also within less than two degrees of the euro's moon, and Neptune was conjunct euro's natal Uranus. Mars had also just finished squaring Saturn. Pluto was also very close to the south node in Sagittarius in 2002, which really speaks of big losses and bankruptcies, tax issues, and stuff like that. And as a result, that was actually a year that was not great for financial markets either. Remember, that was after the whole Y2K market collapse dot com bubble. So, we see that this chart does work, and it is sensitive to two degree orb aspects with Saturn, Venus, Mars, and the Moon. Now, let's get back to present day. Looking at the Euro, we see that they have Saturn in the sign of Aries at 26 degrees. This tells us that Saturn in the birth chart of the Euro will actually be affected by this April's coming eclipse. How do we know this? Because Saturn is in the seventh house of the Euro. This is going to affect the users or the clients of the Euro the partnerships, the agreements tied to the euro. That is what the seventh house represents. Others, as it is the opposite of the first house of the self, the euro itself. Saturn representing rejection and endings can tell us that this could be the beginning of the people leaving their associations to the euro and potentially leaving the European Union as a result of the euro falling apart, which we'll look at in a little bit. Now, the nodes of the moon, which I talk about all the time, they cause eclipses. They often trigger crisis-like events because they are connotative with blocking the vitality of the sun, the sun being that which we need for life on this planet. So it could trigger a sudden event that causes people to stop using the euro because of this coming eclipse. Now, let's take a look at the transiting asteroid Chiron. In May, Chiron will be opposing the natal Mars in the first house of Libra in the chart of the Euro. In the Euro's chart, Mars handles the second house power and energy towards the Euro. And the seventh house, which again represents the clients and the users of the Euro, all of this is being opposed by Chiron, which Chiron is signified as the wounded healer. Will the Euro heal? 
Chiron is also on what's called the part of fortune here, which some of you may notice, but what this really means in this chart, Chiron is actually forming the same degree aspect to the ascendant of the Euro that exists between the Sun and the Moon, which in this case just tells us that 18 degrees is an important degree in this chart. Okay, So, we have transiting Chiron and aspect to Mars. This will speed up the process of having to deal with blocked, irritated, frustrating aspects of energy trying to be expressed through the currency. Right? Currency is current. That's energy itself. So there's blocked, frustrated aspects within the Euro itself being triggered by external circumstances that will affect the Euro's second house of energy and power and the Euro's seventh house of clients and partners because of Mars. Right? So Chiron Mars opposition, it's not an easy experience, you guys. This is the experience of doubting strength, doubting the right to do what you want, doubting the right to even exist. And when a chart with a Chiron Mars opposition does decide to go after what it wants, rejection is typical. So does the Euro deserve to exist? Will the Euro be rejected? These are the questions that we'll be dealing with. You only heal a Chiron Mars opposition after several battles with the aspect. So the Euro is going to be challenged to develop new and unusual strategies to maintain its existence. Right? Does it have the right to survive? And Chiron being an asteroid of awkwardness, we're going to see some awkward things for the Euro trying to fight for its survival. With both Uranus and the North Node in the 8th house of banking, the opportunity to develop unusual strategies to maintain its existence is actually there. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, this 8th house stellium, a stellium is when you have three or more planets in one sign. It's like having three different people in one room trying to achieve all their different objectives and they're all shouting and speaking at once. It's a bit complicated. It's a focus point in the chart, right? That's what a stellium can bring. So we have to focus on this eighth house, which as you guys know, contains hidden things, right? And relates to markets and surprises, crisis events that can come out of markets. This eighth house stellium with the North Node conjunct Jupiter, this could be QE quantitative easing. Printer. Printer is coming. This indicates some kind of bailout or shady money printing event because Rahu, the North Node, can often indicate fraud and toxicity. And Jupiter in the 8th house often indicates a successful easy expansion of borrowing money or the increase of debt. Right? The 8th house again relates to matters of trust and having to deal with exchanging one's life force with others. This can be markets, this can be inheritances, this can be people that we have certain agreements with. The weaker American banks got loans from the Federal Reserve. SVB got loans because, well, the Fed just liked them that much. But if these banks can't pay back these loans, what will happen is they will get swallowed up by larger banks which will also eventually have issues until the Federal Reserve is just the blanket bank of the US if those banks do fail. What this could look like with the Euro if it's not the printing of more Euros is a big demand for what are called Euro dollars. We don't need to get into that in this video. It's a bunch of nerdy economic stuff, but basically let's just say that Europe could need money from the US Federal Reserve. Either way, Something's going to break in Europe's banking system and they'll have to fix it with glue and popsicle sticks or whatever they call it. And whenever they do, they will say up and down, this is not QE, we're not doing QE this time. That, well, technically it's not money printing, but in reality it'll be some similar form of that. Listen, man, <laughs> I just need some liquidity. So, transiting Pluto will meet the natal Neptune of Euro and square the bailout transit over here. That also means that Pluto will be squaring the south node in the second house of Scorpio. Now, what's really key is that Pluto conjunct Neptune speaks of a search of spiritual answers. These are typically caused by a health issue, a crisis, or the death of something, 
So it's this spiritual development of the soul that really causes growth or is even resulting from a health imbalance that is causing the spiritual depth. All right. Neptune is confusion. Neptune talks about dreams, right? So we're out of here when we're talking about Neptune, right? It's the ruler of the 12th house. It's the ruler of Pisces. Really, it's the ruler of Pisces, that significator. The last zodiac sign, which is about fading away from reality and endings, right? It's not about the material concrete world as much. That's Neptune. And then we have Pluto. Pluto is death. Pluto is transformation. Pluto is the higher octave, eighth house Scorpio ruler. So, put these two together, the hopes and dreams for the Euro's future are basically going to die. They're going to undergo a crisis. They're going to be transformed. This is a generational, once in a 500 year transit. So it's going to affect the generations of people. This is true, cultural, collective change. I mean, honestly, the question here at this point is, can the Euro survive another 500 year cycle beginning? Absolutely not. Fiat currencies don't survive 500 years, and neither will the EU. The good thing is the Neptune-Pluto conjunction in the Euro chart, this will clear up any doubts or confusions that have been operating in our subconscious for a long time. This will give people a lot of clarity. Now, with me, I see this as where we get into countries in the EU deciding whether or not they will stay in the Union or form new alliances. See, some countries in the EU will need bailed in and bailed out. Again, like I talked about in the video I did for the American banks, we saw this with Cyprus in 2013, 2014, around that time. So if you live in the EU and your country hasn't managed their books properly, your country might be asking other countries in the EU to help you guys with money. This may be the trigger to cause some of those countries in the EU, the few that don't have financial problems, to say, you know what, we're out of here. Fix your own money problems. Now, let's take a look at the 1993 European Union chart. We see that this chart has a strong Scorpio stellium in the fourth house and its moon in the midheaven in the 10th house of Taurus. This tells us that this chart has definitely been impacted by the eclipse on the financial axis of Taurus and Scorpio. So now we're starting to see an overlap of eclipse seasons. Remember the first one began last January when the market took a dip and you can see the 2022 video where I predicted the markets would fall all 2022 and that's what we saw because of the eclipse season in the financial axis. Now this overlap of eclipse seasons between the Euro chart going into the EU chart is telling us a story here that began with events last year that will continue to be felt impacting the chart of the Euro over the next 18 months as well, as the Jupiter and the Venus in the EU 1993 chart and during the upcoming eclipses being impacted as well. So there's a path we'll follow and I'll keep you guys tuned on how that is playing out over the next 21 months. The interesting thing about the eclipse season on the 19th or 20th of April, depending on where you are, this eclipse season in 2023 this year, is that the EU 1993 chart has a retrograde Mercury in it. And re Mercury will be retrograde, not in Gatorade, but retrograde in the fourth house. So old issues at the time of the union when it was created maybe get triggered to come up during this eclipse because Mercury will be retrograde in the sky during that time in opposition to natal retrograde Mercury at the time the EU was created. It's a very important point. Now, this chart also has Saturn officially transiting the 8th house of the European Union. Saturn in the 8th. This is a transit that is demanding emotional maturity in the face of a crisis for everyone in the Union over the next two and a half years. The 8th house, as you know by now, is a financial house has to do with matters of trust relating to others. These are the themes that will come into crisis that the EU will be dealing with until the end of 2025. So, how does all this end? Well, the Euro does have the planet Uranus, which represents digital currency and changes to how we manage resources, store money, save money, 
All of this is why Taurus and Scorpio is a financial axis that really represents banking and markets. Taurus is good for banking because Taurus is fixed earth, it's stable, it's an energy that's stubborn, it doesn't really want to move. And you want your money to be stable and reliable. That's why banks are associated with Taurus, right? Uranus, obviously, the planet of disruption and shocking events, has been bringing instability to banking and currencies and the storage of material valuable goods since it's been in the sign of Taurus. It's also disrupted real estate, commodities, metals, and all these earthy, under the ground and agricultural food related things all tied to Taurus, all symbolized by that same element, fixed earth. We continue to deal with this, but with Uranus having a few years left to go in the eighth house of the Euro chart, this tells us that a new digital currency, Uranus being the higher octave ruler of Aquarius, which is now being transformed with Pluto in it, Uranus in the eighth of the Euro chart tells us that a new digital currency will be the saving grace for the Euro before Uranus leaves the eighth house of the Euro as a result of fixing the crisis life or death transformation that the Euro will be going through over the next 18 to 20 months that all of these aspects will play out. So that's how you get your CBDC. The ultimate form of a bailout for the Euro will be a digital currency. Cash, gold, silver, Bitcoin, real estate, food, water, shelter, astrocartography relocation for some of you. Not financial advice, but you know, these are some things to think about, aren't they? Until next time, be well, and love to you. Peace.